Hey guys, uh, just taking a peek at my <clears throat> my Roth. It was up to you know um, twenty six or whatever. At one point, it's at twenty four nine. Now, I've been thinking about what I want to do. I've been thinking about. I like to have some silk, some you know, maybe add USOI, maybe add SOVO, maybe add in Jeppy. There's a couple other stocks that uh, um, BGLT or TOT to get some long-term treasury exposure. Um, and maybe something like um, PL, PSLV, which is like a silver, uh, physical silver. Um, it doesn't pay anything, but it just, they buy physical silver. So if silver goes to the moon, uh, should go up. But, um, The more I think about it, the more I just want to stay pat. And um, yeah, I could sell BAK, but I still think it's I think it's way undervalued. I, I you know if they're willing to buy, uh, you know, forty percent of the company for one point one billion, and it's at one point six billion right now. I mean, it has to be worth more than. Two billion. Um, Maine, I think, is, is steady. Uh, um, it's gone up. Um, it's just a really steady company. The um, the banana one, I think, uh, I think, is a nice long-term investment. I mean, it's paying close to four percent dividend. It's it's trading fifty percent of its book value. Um, I really like anything that has to do with oil and natural gas. As you can see, I'm really heavy on the uh, the trust and the oil stuff. I mean, Echo Petrol, PBR, um, SJT. This is more um, natural gas, I think, rather than oil, but. Um, this one is like a um, waste management company that I, that's supposed to be going private. So before it goes private, we were expecting it to go up, or at least I was. Um, land, I think, is just um, steady. You could even add some add a water company in there too because. Um, you know, water is very important. I mean, your body is mainly water. The, you know, you need water for crops. And if things get bad, I mean, people are going to need water to grow crops. I think there's going to be a food shortage. You know, like I was thinking about maybe adding something like Campbell Soup because if if uh, things get really bad, um, you know, people are going to need more canned goods. Um, and the more I look at Geo, I really like Geo, which is prisons, and prisons make a ton of money. Anytime you call somebody, they charge you. Anytime you put interact with anybody in any kind of way they they charge you um so i really like the the oil and gas you know um there's also some smaller companies that i would like to have added um that have been down quite substantially 
but most of them don't pay a dividend though, so that's the problem. And I could, you know, add more oil trusts, maybe SBR, maybe CRT, um, maybe add in some lumber, maybe add in uh, some commodities, other commodities like physical grain, sugar, things like that. Um, but as you can see, I'm still, my cost basis, I'm st still good. These are um my positions and uh i like seeing you know hey i got 100 shares or 200 shares or 300 shares so i like the smaller caps better just for more of a psychological thing you know i mean i, I if I think things are going to go down, I really like Berkshire Hathaway because they got all the cash and they could make some, but at the same time, they're such a big company, uh, it takes a lot to really move the needle when you're that big. And their universe of stuff to invest in is actually very small. Of course, we, they don't have to disclose their foreign holdings, although uh, Buffett invests more in America than he does outside countries. Although I think, you know, there was rumored that he was buying stuff in Japan and other, maybe some other countries, maybe South Korea. But, um, and then the other part of me was, you know, do, do I, do I stick like 60% in the silver or something? Do I stick 60% in um, Do I stick 60% uh, in US long term US treasuries? And um, Do I just sell everything and just hold cash? Because I know I've been doing a lot of doom and gloom videos lately and um, It was interesting. I was I was watching this uh, this guy. He said how he made millions as the world based. He was Citibank's best trader in the world, and um, he basically he basically uh, made two million a year. But he made a lot more money for Citibank than he ever made. I mean, he would make the Citibank $35 million in a year, and they would give him $2 million. Um, but I just want to play a, a few minutes of this. And this guy lost eight million in a week one time. So uh, um, if you think you, you you've done bad, you know, and this is the best trader in the world at one time. But I was eight million dollars in a week when it, when I was in two thousand and ten when I was still twenty three. I was eight million dollars in a week, and that was mad because I graduated two thousand and eight. So a lot of my mates couldn't get jobs. Obviously, that was the financial crisis, right? And I was like halfway through this week by that point, I'd already lost like $5 million in three days. And all my mates around just like playing Pro Evolution. And you're just thinking like, I've lost $5 million. Like, how much more can I lose before I get, lose my job? Um, it really dehumanizes you. It's the stress and the, the pressure of it. And it really, for me, it really separated me from my for my friends and my family. You can't turn around and tell them I lost $5 million this week. You know, they're not gonna understand. And, and also like, you, you don't wanna be, you know what I mean? But at the same time, you can't think about nothing else. You can't think about nothing else. And then I got called into a meeting in early 2011 with one of the Citibank's top economists. And he went through the financial situation of a lot of the world's governments. So I don't know if you remember, in 2011, there was this big crisis with the governments of Italy, Spain, Portugal, Greece, Ireland. This is before that kicked off. 
And he was like, all of these governments go massively into debt every year they're spending more than they can make. They have them sell off their assets. Their debts are exploding, you know, including the governments of the UK, the US, Japan. These are the biggest governments in the world. You know? And I come out of that meeting and I was like, how can it be my friends are losing their houses and going into debt? Their families are doing that. The world's governments are losing their assets and going into debt. Like, where are the assets going? Who is the debt to? Like, it's not possible. We can't all go into debt. Somebody has to go on the other side of that. We can't all lose our assets. Somebody has to be getting the assets. And I was sitting there. I used to have to take the sandwiches to that meeting. So I had, had all these sandwiches around me sitting on the desk coming at this meeting where you realise, like, all of the governments in the world are totally, basically. And you look around and you're surrounded by these, like, fat millionaires in pink shirts. And you realise, like, it's us, isn't it? We, we, are, we are the guys who are accumulating, like, you know, I myself was on the verge of becoming a millionaire at that point. You know what I mean? And you realise, this is it, like, we are accumulating the assets from the middle class, from the government. And, and then you realise it's not going to get better. Because if the middle class families can't afford to pay the bills when they own their own house, or their kids definitely won't when they don't own their own houses, if governments can't run a balanced budget when they're not massively in debt, well, they definitely can't when they are massively in debt. And you, what, you, what I saw in that moment was that it's going to spiral. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. That wealth would continue to be sucked out of the middle class and towards the rich. And I realised straight away that there would never be an economic recovery. And I put this massive bet on. I was an interest rate trader, so I, my specific bet was the interest rates would stay zero for like three years. Everybody thought interest rates were going to come up really quickly. And that bet was super successful, basically. And, and I, I made $35 million to the bank, and I got, I got paid millions of dollars myself. Um, basically, on the back of this bet that, that the global economy would, would collapse and the society would collapse. Suddenly, I was a multimillionaire, surrounded by multimillionaires, betting the economy was going to collapse. And I just thought, what am I doing here? Why am I here? I don't need any more money. But at the same time, I'd worked so hard to get to that space. You know what I mean? And I was the best trader in the world at that point. And you, you, you're getting paid millions of dollars a year. You don't want to walk away from it. But I think this is the, that is the point in my career and in my life where this voice starts to come in that says, is it right to be doing this? I don't think it's wrong for, for poor people to, to do what, what they have to do to make money, as long as you're not directly hurting no one. I think rich people should be giving more. I think rich people should be doing more. And at that stage of my life, I wasn't a poor person anymore, I was a rich person. And I think I knew in my heart I had to be doing more as well. And how did you get out of the trading game, the trading world? I got called into a meeting with my boss. I started, the thing is, this, I hated that boss. I really hated him. <laughs> But I had to laugh at his jokes for six months. And then suddenly I get this bonus, I don't have to laugh at the guy's jokes no more. And I was just like ripping the piss out of this guy every day. And we start to like argue a lot. And he called me into his office and he was shouting at me and screaming at me. And then I just thought, what the am I doing? What am I doing? And I just looked up to my boss and said, I need to quit. And my boss was like, because at that time I was seeing like top trade in the world, right? And then senior management went mental and eventually they decided, okay, don't quit. They're gonna move to Tokyo. And I thought at the time that was a bad idea, but I thought, I said to him, I don't think that's a good idea. And he said to me, you don't understand, you have to go. And I was like, well, if you're going to be about it, then I'll go and take another bonus then, which I did. And I moved to Tokyo. And uh, that begins the, the final fight, you could say, between me and Citibank, me leaving the bank. What was life like after you left? I went through a difficult couple of years leaving. It wasn't easy to leave, but um, it was nice that that happened in Tokyo. I basically had two years of like cycling around Tokyo, eating ramen in little like corner ramen bars, thinking about what it means to be walking away from a two million dollar a year job. Um, it was weird, you know, but I, I decided like I wanted to do something about society collapsing. Maybe I'm a fucking idiot, but that's what I decided to do. And that's what I've been doing ever since. What's your motivation for the work you do now? I mean, is it money? Are you? I don't want society to collapse. Funny people ask me this, you know. I, I made millions of pounds betting that the average British family will collapse into poverty. Desperate poverty. I'm talking about Charles Dickens, Oliver and Twist. That is the future of this country if we don't deal with growing inequality. That is what I see. What are the biggest problems that we face in this country? It's well, I mean, it's wealth inequality. It's wealth inequality. Listen, if you allow wealth to flow at an unbelievably rapid rate out of your middle class, away from ordinary working families, away from the government, towards the super rich, then living standards will collapse housing will become unaffordable. Distribution matters. If, if we're playing chess and you take all of my pieces one at a time, I'm going to lose that chess game. 
That is what I see when I see in the economy. We've seen government debt explode. We've seen living standards collapse for all new working people. At the same time, the biggest and fastest ever increase in the wealth of millionaires and billionaires. And nobody's connecting these two things. The reality is, we've created a world which tells you you need to be rich to be happy, you need to be rich to be of value, and yet which simultaneously makes it almost impossible for them to get rich. Listen, don't buy, don't buy the hype on it, you know. Yeah, work hard to take care of your family and be proud of yourself, be proud of the things that you achieve because they're selling you a dream that they never gave you a chance to get in. And, and if you buy that dream, you're going to be unhappy. And I've got friends that work really, really hard and struggle to pay the bills. And I want, I want those people to be proud because that was my dad and my mom. But the, uh, I don't know how old this video was. Uh, okay, a day ago. But I don't, I'm not sure when this actually interview took place. Um, but yeah, he was saying this was years ago, back in the great financial crisis, and he he knew back then that things were going to get bad. But. Uh, I think it's a lot worse now, but I mean, in the future, I mean, we got AI coming, we got robotics coming, um, you know, maybe asteroid mining, maybe we're going to Mars, you know, like, um, eventually, I think we'll, we'll, uh, come out of this but the thing is you just can't keep going into more and more debt and not have consequences oh, um, I didn't show my, my um, five dollar a day account I basically had pretty much I think I had 1300 or so in there I haven't been adding to it. I had actually sold a thousand and maybe uh, kept a hundred or two hundred in there um, just for a little emergency fund. Um, but yeah, I don't know what to do, guys. Uh, I don't know uh, what. I'd be interested to know what what you guys are doing or uh, uh, what you guys think. But um, I definitely think, uh, you know, oil will go up. I do think uh, um, there's going to be food shortages. Um, we could have World War Three. I don't know. Um, I do like farms, I like water, I like oil and gas, I like silver. The only reason I don't mention gold is, like like I said, I've, gold to me is always 1300 an ounce. So, if it's selling at 20 some, 2000 some uh, an ounce, to me that's over, that's overpriced. That's not to say that it's not going to go up because if you got countries like Russia and India going to this BRICS currency <laughs> and their uh, uh, dollars or whatever their currency is is going to be tied to the BRIC, going to be tied to a gold bar. Um, I've heard somebody say this before, I can't remember who it was, but um, basically, if, if that BRICS currency is going to be tied to the dollar, um, or at least have an exchange rate to the dollar, as the dollar uh, continues to erode in purchasing power, um, that will allow the, uh, the dollar to basically do the heavy lifting for, for the BRIC. And um, 
basically as the dollar declines with them you know printing more money and if if uh, another country can can go go on the gold standard we're back to some kind of gold standard uh, the dollar is going to continue to erode in, in value The thing right now is countries around the world, you, they still need dollars because most of their debt is denominated in dollars. So you still need dollars to pay, pay the, the principal and interest on the debt. And not only that, but usually oil around the world is traded in U.S. dollars, which is the largest um, commodity. Um, but the last couple of years, uh, people have been trading oil and denominations other than dollars um, so I mean the the US has benefited greatly from from having that power of being the world's currency but to me, they're kind of taking advantage of it. And, you know, they got all these cheap goods and services from China for basically free. And all they had to do was just print more money out of thin air. And meanwhile, you had China and Russia and Japan, all these other countries buying our debt by a form of U.S. treasuries. But... Um, what happened in Russia was when they froze those um, two billion dollars in assets and and not only that they they were talking about using that money to finance the war in Ukraine hey we got we got two thousand dollars of Russia's money uh, two billion dollars of their money sitting in our bank accounts why don't we just use that to uh, fund the war in Ukraine you know and uh, the problem with that is what other countries around the world are going to want to invest in our debt if they know that we're not taking things seriously we're just keep printing money 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 and keep racking up astronomical debts the thinking behind it is eventually uh, the economy should grow fast enough and if inflation is let's say two percent over time that will eat away um, the debt and decrease the debt because inflation is basically a tax a tax on your savings but if inflation is as high as it is right now instead of taking you 50 years to lose 100% of your person power um, in the recent history the dollar lost 50% of its value in 5 years <clears throat> so it can happen a lot faster but the one thing I like about my current portfolio for me is it um, everything pays a dividend except for I think maybe one out of the ten so I'm going to be getting you know somewhere between three and, and ten percent uh, dividends I don't know what the average is it might be six or so and hopefully it may not be enough to keep ahead of inflation right now but hopefully eventually uh, if they can get inflation back under control back under two percent if you're getting six percent you're staying ahead of inflation you're growing your assets you're increasing your wealth And then I guess my plan is at some point in the future I think BAK will double 
I think maybe that that company that's going to go private, I think that will double. I think SJT will go back to <coughs> $15 from 5 to 15 so that will basically triple. And uh, the other ones might go up a little bit or might stay stay fairly fairly even. So um, out of the, the 10 things I have, at least three of them, I think have a good chance to double at some point in the, fu in the near future within the next two years. So, so that's why I'm deciding to just stay, stay put. You, you know, like I said, I was, you know, you could get out of the market and, and just keep cash. You could maybe go, go 60% U.S. Treasury. You go 60% um, gold or silver. Um, I think the, the things that the keep are going to be the oil and gas, any kind of um, food, any kind of land, um, anything that you think will go up when the war breaks out. You know, maybe it, you know, I had Smith & Wesson at one point, and it's a very small company, but um, I like small companies because to me they're easier to look at. and. And small companies sometimes grow into big companies, whereas a lot of times old companies just get old and die. And if you know Coca-Cola is paying eighty percent of its profits out from for dividends, I mean, there's really not that much wiggle room left to um, for them to be increasing the dividends. Although they do have very high um, pricing power, you know, we used to be able to buy a soda for fifty cent. Now, I mean, you go in a restaurant, you're paying three, four bucks, and unless the culture changes and and we start drinking water, you know, they they're still going to have that pricing power. But yeah, I've come close several times to to pull the trigger to add more companies and maybe just in, instead of ten percent, maybe put them at two or three, <clears throat> maybe even uh, take a S and P five hundred short position or short the banks or short the real estate. Um, I think those are also viable options. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a tough time and, and um, to, to me we're in an everything bubble. I mean things could collapse 90% across the board. But the problem is I don't know when that's going to happen. It could be two years down the road, you know, and, and when you're out of the market, um, you might miss the five best days of the year. And sometimes it's best just to stay in and dollar cost average and, and um, but, and, but when I get dividends, I'm not automatically just reinvesting them. I'm trying to build up a little bit of a cash position so that if the market does collapse at some point in the near future, whether it's later this year, um, or next year, that you'd be able to have a, um, have some ammo to take advantage of those reduced prices. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys.